What's up, what's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear here again today with another fantastic hobby review. This time we're taking a look at some Kabuki miniatures. Uh, these are really great miniatures that are put out by an Italian company, and they uh, they have miniatures for just about everything. So you can definitely go over and check out all the stuff they have to offer over on their site because there's there's stuff from you know like uh, Disney kind of things, like Brothers Grimm kind of tales, all the way up to you know they got some like Stormtrooper offerings kind of coming out and of course this particular offering here which is the Legio Praetoria command group uh, but to you and me that is the Emperor and his custodies you know what I mean <laughs> now sure they can't say certain things and they can't sculpt certain things but I think me and you know what this really is you know what I mean so this is a really interesting kind of uh, package deal that they got going on here this is a double package It's basically the um, Celestine Knight which is you know the Emperor of Mankind himself and then it also comes with a uh, five pack of his uh, custodies basically but their, their term actually is, I believe it's uh, Legio Praetoria Halberdier Squad, which is actually, it's the five-man squad. So um, that's basically what this is right here. So it's kind of a good deal as far as, you know, money-wise goes. Now, this is all priced in euros. So this particular box sells for 80 euros. But if you buy the two components separately, they sell for 45 euros. So they give you a little bit of a break there. Um, I think in American money, that's roughly on par with the dollar right now. Nothing too crazy like the English pound where it's like 1.5 to 1.6 just depending on you know which way the the winds blowing on a particular day so to speak so Kabuki games a really cool interesting um, models that they come out with that really are great character models for just about anything out there um, uh, I, I've, I've used their stuff in the past they they went from resin to uh, they went from pewter initially to resin to now they kind of got this um this kind of I want to call it privateer pr plastic I don't know the exact plastic that it actually is but I know it's um it's a little bit easier to work with you know you don't have to do quite as much work with the injection molding and things like that but it's still a great plastic you can use um, the normal super glue to uh, put the models together and things like that so it's it's cool to see the progression of the company as a whole from you know just three years ago working with pewter which is incredibly expensive to resin which is also kind of expensive but it holds great detail to kind of being able to um, offer a mass market kind of things when I say mass market you know not Best Buy and you know Circuit City or you know anything like that or Walmart it's just for our industry being able to actually uh, have miniatures to get to market is kind of half the battle these days you know because people they come out with minis and, and they kind of um, I guess don't don't really research like how much they'll need and then they you know the time between restocks the demand for the product has already died and that's an unfortunate thing to see because there's a lot of great minis out there but if you don't keep the interest up and you don't keep your new releases coming out and obviously if you don't keep up with the demand um, you are just gonna be tomorrow's or yesterday's news you know kind of kind of what I mean there so let's take a closer look at the actual box set itself because I want to show you these two great squads and how good the sculpting really is uh, from Kabuki models but before we do all that, I would like to invite you to make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, check out the blog, spikybitsblog.com, and head over to thelongwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and also some exclusive discount codes that help you save on the hobby, on the stuff you buy every month. Uh, become a veteran of the long war today. So like I was saying, we're going to take a closer look at this. Now, another thing that I really like about Kubiki models, and this is this is just getting to the actual, you know, the packaging and stuff. This is this is a young company. You know, this this company I might be five years old. Um, I used to carry them at Spiky Bits about three, two, three years ago. But what I really like about this company is they didn't kind of fall for that trap of, um, you know, crappy packaging. <laughs> let's just let's just call it what it is, crappy packaging. You see a lot of companies out there, and they buy these like these old like DVD containers and their, their graphics aren't that great and they don't really do a good job um, with the models themselves. Now Kabuki, and I don't have any of the blisters, but the Kabuki blisters 
are the traditional kind of, um, I guess they're similar to the rack and blisters from, from days of old. And they have, you know, a little bit of foam in there to protect the models themselves because that's what it's all about at the end of the day, right? Uh, you don't want to buy something that's, that's getting imported from Europe that's all busted up. So they take really good quality care of their packaging. They have really great shots of their models, you know, uh, colorful shots of the models on the, on the package itself, you know, so you kind of know what you're getting. You know, there isn't any like, oh, okay, well, I didn't, I didn't realize, you know, that isn't, that isn't really what I'm getting. You know, you kind of see the bases here, and they do the bases a little bit different. They're the round lip, just like Privateer. But, you know, we all have bases. We can change it out to personal preference and things like that. Um, the, another thing I like about them is... Obviously, the dynamic graphics. Look at the printing on this, right? Got some really cool looking printing. Um, it's obviously laid out very well. It's got all the pertinent information. It's got the company logo. It's got, you know, the URL. It's got what it is. And it's got exactly what comes in it right here. Um, and then it also kind of breaks it down. Uh, figures are, are packed in a solid carbon box. Um, need assembly and painting and then you know you got your normal warning things right there needs glue you know choking hazard etc etc so all the pertinent information it's all delivered in a clear uh, concise manner that it is also visually appealing like if I see this on the shelf I want to pick it up I'm like ooh what's that that's cool you know and I just pick it up and take a look at it now when we get to the actual packaging itself it's a cardboard box sure it's probably a cardboard mug box you know a coffee mug box to be honest but that doesn't don't let that belittle it any because this is you know this is gonna protect what's on the inside you know this is this is corrugated cardboard it's pretty strong you know when you pack this in a case you know you, you, across the ocean you know it's not gonna get destroyed I literally got this ordered this got it in just like this you know not destroyed or anything like that it came in a, a little bit bigger of a box but not too much bigger and you know it was in good, good condition and then you open it up they've got peanuts in here now I already looked at it to be honest, but this was packed a little bit better. They got a foam piece, they got peanuts, and then they've got the actual models themselves in little Ziploc baggies. So it's all very well packaged, which is which is half the battle there because sometimes you get stuff and you're just like, dude, what were these guys thinking? Like this, there's no way this would have ever survived. So this is the Emperor model right here, the Celestine Knight, and then of course this is the uh, Praetorian Squad right there as well. And like I said, you can kind of tell the difference. Like they are, this is that kind of plasticky material. This looks to be a resin. Now, this is the first casting of of the Emperor. I imagine it's, it's a new release. It just came out. So it's going to be um, on their, you know, I guess I want to say, um, what do they call them? The Showcase Series, the Knights of Legend. They're a little bit higher quality, so they've always done them in resin. They started out in pewter. They do them in resin. Now, on the squads and such, that is the plastic, like we were talking about, the privateer plastic. But I'll show you. It's really good quality stuff. Like, this is the components for the Emperor. It's got a uh, base top right there, which is very similar. We've seen that in the past from, like, Privateer and, you know, Malifaux even. And then you've got the actual um, parts, right? Now, look at that little sword right there. That came all the way across the ocean undamaged because of really good packaging, I feel like. Um, this is going to be a large model. It's the Emperor, right? The Emperor, <laughs> he's the Billy Badass of 40K, right? So it is a large model. Now, this is 54 probably 54 millimeter scale I mean it's once you put it together like here's the torso right and oops wrong way so there's the torso so you're talking you know this is on par with forge world scale of the Primarchs themselves and you got this really big cape which is another great piece right there and then you've got all the little doodads that make up the rest of the kit from the actual head and the head is huge I mean the head is as big as a torso normally on like a space marine or something right and then you've got some of the shoulder pads which are also huge I mean you're talking bigger almost bigger than Terminator scale these little feathers I mean this is this is incredible quality I mean for a younger company take a look at that like the the detail on that is pretty incredible I feel like and then you've got you know parts of his leg or parts of his arms excuse me then you've got his eagle and his, his little groin plate, the Praturgis, or however you call them, pterodactyls. We'll call them pterodactyls. Spelt very similar. Then you got the lightning claw. Look at those little pieces right there. That came across the ocean undamaged. You know what I mean? And then you've got more little uh, lapellets and armor plating things, pieces that go various places. Now, the only thing I really didn't like is there's not like an instruction manual per se, but I mean, honestly, they got all the pictures on the internet 
and then if you can't look at that and kind of figure out where the stuff goes to put it together, you probably shouldn't be buying a showcase. You're spending 80, 80, you know, 80 euros on a showcase quality model in the first place. Now I realize sometimes people are going to get these things as, as gifts, and it's probably a little out of their skill level. But then again, at the end of the day, you know, you really have to kind of stay inside your skill level. I always hate seeing people, you know, destroy forge world models. But then again, it's their money, and they, you know, you, you feel free. You know, shine on you crazy diamonds. Do what you want. You paint them pink for all I care. As long as you're having fun with the hobby that's all that counts right <laughs> um, and then you know be, be ready to buy that pink squig off on, on eBay you know to the next month right <laughs> so it's a really good good quality model I mean I think this is very very well done I mean you take a look at it there isn't a lot of flash or anything like that you can kind of tell where they where they filled it. it's very lightweight material um, you know, it's it, it looks to slot together very well. I mean, they've graduated to definitely doing this stuff on 3D. Uh, you can definitely tell just by kind of looking at it and seeing how, how it goes together there. But, I mean, it's very good-looking stuff, and I would definitely recommend this model to anybody because, I mean, let's face it. At the end of the day, we don't really know what's going on with Forge World. And let's be honest, Forge World is expensive stuff. When you're talking $100 um, for a Primark model, and when you can get it for half price that looks just as good from these guys, I mean, why not, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, at the, do you want the same model that everybody else has? Do you want to be able to convert it a little bit? You know, do you want something that's a little bit different? Maybe a little bit better of a pose. Maybe, um, you know, a little bit uh, different artist uh, interpretation of the model itself. You know, that's, that's kind of what I feel like. At the end of the day, it's money, cost, and time. And what is it, you know, money, skill, and time? And, and what, what do you value more? Like, maybe, we're all, you know, there's some ballers out there and they can just afford to pick up the Forge Roll stuff. But I feel like... Kabuki has really come on as its own company and you know it's really offering a lot of uh, individual stuff out there and unique things besides some of the stuff you know that is obviously uh, something out of the grimdark future but I digress so here's kind of uh, some of the um, Custodes models, the halberdiers, so to speak. So you can kind of tell it is a plastic material. They are a little bit bigger. This is a, you know, this is a ultramarine, or excuse me, an iron warrior that I always grab. So they're going to end up being a little bit taller than a normal um, space marine model, basically, which is to be expected because these guys are on par. You know, they're not quite Primarchs, but they're not quite, you know, just a normal Jobla space marine either. So there's a set of all the different running legs, and there's five different running legs, five different poses. I mean, you can tell right by here. There's an A, B, C, D, and E right there. Is kind of how they how they have them painted up, and then right there, they kind of show you the different heads and things. But I mean, feel free to assemble them however you want. Um, when you start taking a look at like the torsos and things like that, like they're very similar to what we would expect, but a little bit more ornate, kind of um, very, uh, I guess, uh, very Roman, but yeah, it's still almost the grim dark, you know. And they slot right in to the legs right there, so you don't have to worry about like things sticking out or which which one goes to what and things like that. So when you pick one, it's going to slot right in and be good to go. And then you got the great looking shoulder pads are very full of detail. Um, they got like the, the little shiny suns and uh, there's all sorts of different ones here. I don't exactly know a lot about the heraldry of the custodies to be quite honest. Um, and then of course you got the, the mask right here which kind of look like a little bit of a cross between an Eldar helmet and maybe something you'd see with the tassels from like a Chaos Space Marine. Well, it's it's cool stuff. Um, I converted one a long time ago. You can check out. There's a conversion up on Spiky Bits. And to be honest, like that was a pain in the ass. <laughs> if I could just buy some stuff and then maybe tinker, maybe do a little converting off of this um, to kind of make it into my own vision, I feel like that would have been better and more achievable. Because making an army out of the conversion I did, and once you see it, you're like, ugh, that would just so much money in parts, so much money, you know, in time. Um, just the ability to pick up these guys here and maybe switch out a few components to to your particular liking would be uh, money in the bank, so to speak. So. The actual halberds right here are two different pieces. You've got the shaft with the two hands, which are going to line up, kind of depending on what arms you use. Now, I could imagine that lining these arms up is going to be a pain because there doesn't seem to be any notation on them as to what goes with what. But however, it seems to be a little bit easier uh, to slot them in because there is that little slot. I don't know if you can see it, but there's, there's a square socket in the actual arm itself. So when it goes to lining these up, 
with the actual wrist, you see right there, there's a square socket as well. So it looks like that wouldn't be quite as big of a pain, but it looks like they are all the same. So it's up to you kind of which ones you want to slot in and which ones you want to use. Here's a lot more of the pieces, but you know, I just, uh, just wanted to showcase a few of them right there. Um, so that's the, that's really the only thing I could, uh, you know, I guess criticize a little bit about the about the models themselves is the lack of directions. And you know, I like with the Space Marine sprue when you kind of cut them all off. You got A, B, C, and D. You're like, oh, okay, this arm goes with this arm, goes with this leg, goes with this. Because nowadays with the kits, it's very complicated to put a lot of these kits together. So you don't want to just kind of run in and clip everything off the sprue. You have to clip basically one guy off the sprue, shave it all down, glue it together. Another guy, shave it all down. Because that way, you, you're not like spending 10 minutes trying to like get his arms to match when his arms aren't even going to match because you grabbed the wrong ones. <laughs> oh man, the plight is real these days. So all this, all this technology is just making things harder and harder, but very much more detailed and detailed. I mean, you can tell my old iron wears from back my old Iron Warrior from back in the day, 2002, 2003. You know, he's definitely starting to show his age detail wise. You got something here that's an amalgam of, of pewter and, and resin parts. And, you know, obviously doesn't even stand up as tall as a normal Marine now. He's on his, <laughs> his stupid 28 millimeter base. You know, I put a little washer in there because I had a magnetized base back in the day. And, um, he's starting to show his age. I mean, he looks good. He's still sexy, but he's starting to show his age design-wise. You know, when you see all this new stuff coming out, and I'm sure when we'll see new Chaos Space Marines, uh, he'll he'll definitely look a little buster at that point. But you know, technology is good. It pushes the envelope. It gives us the new exciting stuff. And who knows? At the end of the day, maybe we'll just be able to you know go over to KabukiModels.com and print out a actual. Oh, that's my that's my alarm to uh, feed the cats. Uh, we'll be able to go over to Kabuki Models and spend 50 bucks and pick up a uh, pick up a blueprint. You know, send it over to our to our maker bot, our 3D printer, and boop, print. You know, and you can print it as many times as you want or whatever, or within a certain period or something like that. I don't know what restriction would be reasonable to keep people from abusing it because let's face it, at the end of the day, we're all um, <laughs> we're we're all trying to get over on the system. And uh, I mean, it, you see it in the tabletop, you see it in extreme couponing. You see it in real life, you know, it's just it's just the way humans are, it's human nature, that's what we do. But, ex exciting times, exciting products, Kabuki's got some really good stuff out there, so check out all their different offerings over at Kabuki Models, and of course they got some holiday sales going on as well. Um, I'm not exactly sure what they all are or when they end, but there is a bunch of stuff happening right now over there, so definitely check them out for all of your uh, modeling and or character conversion and or featured showcase miniature needs.